Welcome back to the Tetris game and for this part we are going to create a timer that is going to move every single block one line further down. Which means what we are going to make is a custom timer that runs indefinitely and every time it times out it does a certain thing. Later on we are going to create multiple timers so let's get started with a basic one. Here we are back in the code and basically what we are going to do let me minimize everything. And right now we have a tetromino. And this one has a whole bunch of blocks. And if we want to move these blocks further down, we simply have to increase the position of every single block. This we are getting inside of the block. There we have X and Y. And we simply have to increase Y. Although this we want to do with some timed offset. And this certain amount of time we also want to customize. Which basically means that the longer the game goes on, the shorter this duration should be. But for all of that, I want to create a new Python file and save it as timer.py. All I want to create in there is going to be a class called timer. There's no need for inheritance. We do, however, as always, need a dunder init method. This one needs self, and besides that, I want to have a duration. I want to tell this timer if it is repeated or not, although by default it is not, so this is false. On top of that, once this timer is timing out, I want to be able to call a function. That function we have to pass in as an argument, although the default argument here is going to be none. With that setup, we can create a really simple timer that simply has a duration, or we can create a much more complicated one that is repeated and calls a function once it times out. First of all though, I want to store repeated as an attribute, so self.repeated is repeated, and same for the function, self.func is going to be func. And the same we have to do with the duration. And with that, let's talk about how a timer is going to work. Inside of Pygame, unfortunately, there isn't an inbuilt way to create a timer. However, what we do have is a way to check the amount of time that has passed since we started the game. So for example, if this is the starting point of the game, we could check wherever we are on this point. For example, we could check the time at some point during runtime of the game, and this could be one second. Although to be a bit more precise, Pygame measures this time in milliseconds. So this would be 1000 milliseconds, which is a much more precise number. And this is all we need to figure out a custom timer. Basically how it's going to work. Imagine if I get rid of all of this, we have a game timeline over a certain period of time. You can just assume that the game runs indefinitely. While that game is running, we are going to measure the time twice. Once, and this is going to be the starting point, could be here. Let's say this is at 1500 milliseconds or 1.5 seconds. This would be the starting point. After that time, we are going to continuously measure the time. This could here, 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 and so on. Let's say this tick could be 2000 milliseconds, we could have another tick at 2200 milliseconds, and so on. The specific numbers really do not matter. The only thing that we care about is the difference between our starting time and then the time we are measuring afterward. For example, if we measure the time and it's 2200, then the distance will be 700 milliseconds. Effectively, this would be the elapsed time since our starting point, which we can use to measure some kind of a duration. For example, for this timer, let's say we have a duration of 1000 milliseconds or one second. If we are at this point, we could simply compare is this number greater or equal than the duration, and it is not. As a consequence, we are not triggering the timer. However, later on, let's say on a point here, we could be at second 2510. On that point, we would have a duration of 1001 milliseconds. And that would be greater than 1000, so we know the timer has elapsed. And that's basically all we need to create a custom timer. So, to get started, I want to create self.startTime. By default, this can be zero or none, it doesn't really matter. On top of that, I want to add another attribute that I'm going to call self.active. 
which by default is going to be false. Then next up, I want to have a method called activate. It doesn't need any custom parameters, and in there, I want to set self.active to true. This should be capitalized. On top of that, I want to set self.startTime to pygame.time.get underscore ticks. Get ticks is a really important method inside of Pygame. It gives you the time that has elapsed since the start of the game, or more specifically, since we have called pygame.init. Earlier on, when I talked about getting these times, I always talked about using the get ticks method to get the milliseconds since the start of the game. And this we are getting once when we are calling this activate method. After that, we are going to create an update method. Once again, no custom parameters, and in there, I want to get the current time. And this is a local variable. This one, once again, is going to be pygame.time.get underscore ticks. And now what we have to do is simply compare the current time minus self.start time. If that difference is greater or equal than self.duration, and I guess we can also check if this timer is active, then we can do stuff. We're going to add that in just a second. But for now, the basic logic. This update method we are going to call on every single frame of the game, which means when we are calling current time, we are getting the current time of the game. However, activate is only going to be called once when we are activating the timer. That way current time is increasing, but self.start time is not. So the difference between the two will grow over time. If that is the case, I want to run another method called self.deactivate. All that this one is going to do, let's put it right below activate, deactivate self, and in there self.active is going to be false, and then self.startTime is going to be zero. That way, we would have an incredibly basic timer. Although there are two more things that I want to do in there, and let me add comments to document all of this properly. So this would be to reset timer. Besides that, I also want to call a function. So inside of the init method, we have one argument for a function. This one later on should simply accept a method or a function, but by default, it is none which is super useful because we can use that inside of an if statement. We want to check if there is self.func. And if that is the case, we want to run self.func. By default in Python, if you have none and you put that into an if statement, it is going to evaluate to false. So this would only run if there is a function. Although what I realized while testing is that you also want to add self.startTime is different from zero. If you didn't include this one, there would be some minor bugs, although it wasn't too bad, but sometimes it can cause issues. Okay, with that, we are calling the function if there is a function once the timer has run out. On top of that, I want to repeat the timer, but only if repeated is true. By default, it is not. Although if it is, we can once again check if self.rip repeated. If that is the case, we simply want to run self.activate again. That way, once we are exceeding the time, we are calling whatever function we have to call, then we are deactivating the timer, and then we are reactivating it. And with that, we have a really powerful timer. If you ever work in Pygame and you need to get the time or call a repeated timer, this is the class you want to use. Super useful. Let's use it right away. Inside of game.py, I want to import from timer, import timer. And let me minimize everything else so it's easier to read. Inside of the game dunder init method, I want to create a timer section. Most importantly, I want to create a timers dictionary. This one is going to get quite long, so I'm going to put this over multiple lines. Most importantly, I want to have a vertical move entry. And this is going to be a timer. The timer now is going to need three arguments, the duration, repeated, and a function we want to call once it times out. 
For the duration, you can find a number inside of settings. It is update start speed. Not the best name for a variable, but it certainly works. Repeat it should be true. And then the function we're going to create right now. I'm calling this one move down. And with that, I can minimize draw grid and run. And let's create a move down method. For the parameter, we need self and nothing else. And basically all we want to do, we want to get the tetromino, so the class we are creating down there. And then we want to call a method on this one, which we can also call move down. Then inside of tetromino, we have to create that method as well. So define move down without any custom parameters. Later on, this move down function will become quite complex. However, in the most basic sense, all that we want to do is for block in self dot blocks, meaning we are taking all of the blocks we created earlier, we are updating block dot post dot y and increasing it by one. That way, every single block is going to move one block further down. For that to work though, we have to do one more thing that right now, we only have a timer, but this timer doesn't work by default. Number one, we have to activate it. So if you look at the timer, this timer needs to be activated, meaning we have to call the activate method. This we can do right away after we are creating it. So self.timers, and we want to get the vertical move, and this we want to activate. This unfortunately is still not enough because now we have to call this update method on every single frame of the game. It will not be run on its own. For that, inside of the game, I want to create another method. We can simply call this one timer underscore update. No need for custom parameters. And in there, all we are going to do is for timer in self dot timers dot values. And then we want to get timer dot update. That way, all of the timers we are going to create later will be updated. And for now, just to check if this is working, I don't want to move down a tetromino. Instead, I simply want to print timer. So let's run main.py and see if something happens. And we are getting an error that bool object is not callable. Let's see what went wrong. The issue happens on this line. When we are trying to activate a timer, this shouldn't be active, this should be activate. We are trying to call this method, but I try to call this boolean. But now let's try this again. And now we get another issue that pygame is not defined. That is because inside of the timer, we are not importing from settings. Although, since we are only using one specific method of pygame, we don't have to import all of the settings. All we can do is from pygame.time, import get underscore ticks. That way we can simply get the ticks inside of the timer and call it a day. And now if we are running this, there's one last thing that I did forget. And that is we are not updating timer.update. So the only thing that we are running continuously is this run method. Meaning in there, we have to update the timer. Let's add an update section in there. And I want self dot timer update and call this method. And now if I run this, we get timer after about every 800 milliseconds. Of if I close the game and make this a much smaller number and run main.py again, now we get the timer much more often. And this is exactly what we need. Sorry for all the mistakes. I should have been a bit more careful. But all right, now we have a timer that we can call continuously which means I can get rid of the print statement for the timer and run down. Although if I now run main.py, nothing is going to happen. That is because inside of the Tromino, all of this works perfectly fine. So the block position is indeed increasing. However, the issue is inside of the block, we are first creating this position, then we are extracting X and Y from this position, and then we are using all of that to create a new rectangle. The really important thing you have to understand is that this rectangle is what actually sets the position. Changing anything else is not going to change that position. And in our case, we are only changing the position. We are not changing the rectangle. 
For that, we have to do one more thing. We have to create an update method. This one itself, but nothing else. And a really useful thing about sprites, which the block is, is that this update method can be called via the group. We are already using the group to draw all of the sprites. Another thing that we can do is self.sprites.update. The only thing that this update does is it takes all of the sprites inside of the group and then runs an update method, which means in there we can print, for example, self.pos. If I now run main.py, you can see we get all of the positions and those are increasing. So the timer is definitely working, which means now we have to figure out how to turn self.pos into the rectangle, which means with our new position, we want to update or rather create a new rectangle with the right position. And this could be a really good exercise. To repeat myself, update the rectangle using the information from self.pos. Pause the video now and try to figure this one out yourself. Back in the code editor, we could basically copy all of the stuff we have done here. In fact, you could literally just copy all of it. If we are now running all of it, now the pieces are moving down and the speed may be a bit fast because this 50 is quite quick. Let's change it to 600. If I now run main.py, that looks significantly better. Although this doesn't feel particularly elegant, we can refine things quite a bit here. Most importantly, when you have a vector, like self.pos, which right now could have the values, let's say one and three. If you multiply a vector with any number, let's say 40 for the cell size, if you're doing that like this, the result would be a new vector that updates every value individually. The outcome would be 40 and 120. These are the numbers we actually care about. Meaning instead of X and Y, we could simply get self.pos and multiply it with the cell size. Then I can get rid of all of that and the comment and try this again. And we still get a movement. So this is also working. On top of that, what we can also do is not create a new rectangle and instead change the existing rectangle. Let me comment out all of this and instead I want to get self.rect and then the top left of this rectangle. This is going to be self.pos multiplied by the cell size. Once again, if I run main.py, it is still going to work. With that setup, instead of creating a whole new rectangle, we are updating the existing one. And this is a nice and straightforward line that is much easier to read. I suppose what we could be doing in the original, instead of creating X and Y as local variables, we could now get self.pos and multiply it with the cell size and get rid of all of this. That makes the entire thing much cleaner. Also, I realized inside of settings, the starting row should be negative one. And now if I run main.py again, we get a block starting all the way from the top and then moving downwards. So this is looking really good. However, you can see it once we reach the end, the block simply disappears, meaning we have to add collisions. Well, we actually have to add quite a lot of things like movement, rotation, speeding up, and then we get to collisions. But we certainly have a really good start.